Now it only took Tom four months to lose that weight, that 50 pounds. And based on a, a documentary, the filming of documentary where they talked about it, Tom restricted himself to the foods he would have eaten on that island. All right, all right, all right. Carnivore Soldier coming at you from Austin, Texas. Again, with another movie review. This is a carnivore movie review. This is a first. All of my other carnivore movie reviews have been reviews of documentaries that deal with diet. This one's just actually an entertainment movie, a storytelling movie, and it directly ties to carnivore, and you'll see why. The movie was released in the year 2000. It's called Castaway, directed by Robert Zemix and starring Tom Hanks. And Tom Hanks plays a FedEx executive and he gets stranded on an island when his plane crashes and undergoes physical and emotional transformation after the crash and also learns how to survive. It's a great movie. I enjoyed it when it first came out. Now that I'm a carnivore, I watched it again with fresh eyes. And it's very obvious what happens to him is what happens to us on the carnivore diet in a good way. The good things that happen for him in the beginning, the guy is definitely out of shape. And I'll show some pictures in a little bit. He's a typical guy eating a standard American diet and living the high stress, typical corporate job life where it's always on the clock. You're traveling a lot. You're eating junk. You're just living the the standard American life. I, I guess the Western life, not just American life. And he is totally in that window. And he is 50 pounds heavier in the beginning of the movie. Anyway, the interesting thing is it, during the movie, they took a break of a year between the two halves of the movie. The first half is when he's Fat Tom. And Fat Tom gets stranded on the island. And he starts learning how to live and figuring things out, like how, how to make fire, uh, how to eat fish, that kind of stuff. And he mostly eating raw fish. So he ate a lot of raw foods. He did eat some cooked crabs too. But once he got fire going. So, and then learning how to drink water from rainwater, which he collected with leaves and coconuts. He had cut open coconuts and drink coconut water as well. So the super interesting thing about this, this movie is in the beginning, he was just eating the standard diet, just like he was in real life. The actor, Tom Hanks, was eating the standard diet and just eating loads of regular foods. And then after the first half of the movie was shot where he gets stranded, they fast forward four years and they show the new Tom Hanks. Now, it only took Tom four months to lose that weight, that 50 pounds. And based on a a documentary, the filming of documentary where they talked about it, Tom restricted himself to the foods he would have eaten on that island. So he was drinking some basically water and eating fish and occasionally coconut water, but not the kind you think at the store because that has all kinds of additives. This is like real cut a coconut open drink. And if you've ever tasted it, it does not taste anything like those coconut waters and maybe eating some coconut every now and then. So this is all he ate. So this kind of goes back to my argument of which diets would be sustainable, right? Because he ate that for four months and lost 50 pounds and you'll see the pictures. I'm gonna show the pictures right now. So as I'm talking, you're probably looking at the pictures of Tom Hanks when he began, when he created fire, which was fat Tom Hanks. And then the transformation this was shot a year after, but he transformed. It said in the documentary I watched in four months, he lost that 50 pounds and put on muscle eating uh, fish and crab and uh, a little bit of coconut water and then regular water. That's basically all he had. And he said a few other things, but he really just restricted his diet. So this is the carnivore argument, right? That if two people were stranded on an island, and one was a carnivore diet and one was a vegan diet, the vegan would die. And even if the vegan's favorite foods were on that island, which they're probably not, like on this island, there's no vegetables he could eat. All just a coconut is all he could probably eat. And you can't eat too much of that because it'll let you know. And 
the if, even if a vegan had all their favorite vegetables, to say had corn, they had potatoes, they had whatever they liked in vegetables, they would die from a B12 deficiency because there's no B12 in any of that. You have to have it in meats. And this is why the vegan diet is just clearly not a, a proper human diet because there's no way a proper human diet would require supplementation of B12. If so, our ancestors would have died out if they were actually truly vegans, right? Because there were no supplements, there were no fortified cereals, there were no B12 supplements anywhere. The only supplements that had B12 would be eggs and meat, right? So anyway, the the whole argument of is veganism a proper human diet is just false just on the B12. And there's other problems too, but just the B12 basically tells you all you need to know. That is a binary thing, right? Uh, you just cannot live on it. So if two people landed. This guy landed. He was a carnivore on the island. He ate fish. And that's what they show him doing, spearing and eating fish. He's just eating it raw after a while, just like the Inuit do up in Alaska. And one interesting thing that's happened to me on the carnivore diet, which I think happened to him, they kind of show it, is eating just becomes a biological function. That's all it becomes. And it's no different than going to the bathroom or whatever. It's just something you do. It's not entertainment anymore. Entertainment I find elsewhere. And I do enjoy my meals still, but it's not like I'm going to focus on them like I used to, where I used to plan out meals every day of the week. And that was my entertainment. Like, oh, Taco Tuesday and Wednesday is this and Friday is going to be fish or whatever. It's not like that anymore. It's just, I'm just going to eat as I need to. And then I'm going to eat probably pretty quickly because it doesn't take long to eat and then just go enjoy my life and do more interesting things. Food is not all that interesting, believe it or not, once you get away from that style of eating where it's entertainment. It's been sold to us as entertainment. The food industry, the restaurant industry, pharmaceutical industry wants us to eat this way. There's a lot of parties that are interested in us eating this way. Well, the carnivore way, you just eat food and you're not anyway, and then you move on, right? You just eat food and then you move on. So Tom Hanks uh, does get rescued. He finally leaves the island. I don't want to do too many spoilers, but I have to talk about how he gets rescued in the end. I won't talk about how he gets rescued, but in the end, how at the end, he has a big party thrown by FedEx because he's a FedEx executive and it's catered. And also on the plane, when they're flying him to the party, his buddy brings him back two glasses of ice and a full Dr. Pepper. And I notice he doesn't drink the Dr. Pepper. He just eats the ice. And once you're away from the sugar addiction, those things just don't even seem appealing anymore. It's so crazy because I was a sweetaholic. And I say sweetaholic, not just sugaraholic, because I was addicted to sugars, but also sweeteners. So non-sugar sweeteners, artificial sweeteners. Uh, Diet Coke was my go-to. When I went to a movie like this, when I saw Castaway, I guarantee you I had a large Diet Coke and a popcorn with what they call butter, which is actually seed oils poured onto the flavored seed oils poured onto the popcorn. It's probably the worst, most inflammatory thing you could ever eat. So glad I don't do that anymore. And uh, that was quite a change in my, my lifestyle to go to a movie without popcorn and a Coke because my whole life I've done it decades. And now I just go with a bottle of water and I'm totally good. I, at first I did bring like, I would wear cargo pants and put in my cargo pockets. I would fry pork belly bites and salted air fried pork belly bites and uh, put them in a Ziploc and eat those. But after a while, I don't, I just don't even need a snack when I go to movie now. It's weird. It's my routines have changed. My tastes have changed and it's no longer required. So Anyway, this movie is really great from a carnivore perspective. It does show real transformation in weight from Tom Hanks from living a carnivore lifestyle for four months only. And that's about what time, in my experience, it takes to get full carnivore. 100 days to 120 days is the full transformation. So if you do carnivore for 30 or 40 days, you're not carnivore. You're trending towards carnivore, but your body has not made the full adjustment. The, so it takes four months to get the full adjustment to your full carnivore. Then it can take months, years to heal all the things that you've damaged in your body over time. I'm still in the healing phase, but 
my weight's gone from 280 down to 234. So I lost 46 pounds and he lost 50. So I had a similar transformation that Tom Hanks did. And I was probably looking a lot like Tom Hanks was in the beginning of the movie. I was bloated. I felt really bloated. And he doesn't talk in that documentary about any of the changes physically or energy wise, but I know if he was eating fish and doing a carnivore style diet, and this is back in 2000 before carnivore was a thing, right? But he did it because he wanted to make it historic or like a, an accurate anthropologically accurate movie of like what would happen. And he had survival specialists show him what, what would happen if someone really crashed on this island how would they uh, survive and what would be the effects? And so he wanted it as close to true as possible. So that's why he did it this way. Anyway, so that's all I got, guys. I recommend the movie. It's a great one to watch with family and friends and say, look, see, Tom Hanks did this for four months, lost all this weight. And he, and he was really healthy. And uh, anyway, it's just a great movie. It's entertaining. And it is a carnivore movie. It's the first entertainment carnivore movie I've ever done. I saw it pop up on, right now it's for free on Tubi. There'll be a link below so you can watch it for free on Tubi. And that's what I watched it on. And when I saw it pop up, I immediately thought, wow, that guy, if I remember watching the documentary and the documentary is on YouTube, I'll link to that too. So it, the making of it. And that's where they talk about Tom Hanks diet and how he lost all that weight. So I'm going to link both those below here. They're both free to watch and recommend you check it out. All right, guys, that's all I got to say. Stay strong and overcome. Carnivore Soldier out.